Okay, so in this video, I'll talk about machine learning and AI trends for 2019, what to expect, right? So, um, AI technology landscape is pretty broad as of now, right? It is being sort of uh, used in various kinds of fields, like um, uh, for, uh, um, you know, uh, cyber security, robotic personal assistance, automatic uh, robotics, next gen cloud robotics, or even uh, gaming or uh, machine translation, real time universal machine translation, virtual companions in terms of conversational bots, and so on. Right? Real time motion analytics, whole bunch of AI and ML scenarios that you see these days. Right? And they are powered by various kinds of techniques like. Uh, Autonomous systems, machine learning, deep learning, neural networks, better recognition, you name it. Lots of techniques, NLP, um, computer vision, and so on, which sort of enable a whole bunch of these use cases. Okay. It's already uh, a whole lot popular. Now, what more to expect uh, about, about AIML right? in, in, in this year and the future, in the next few years? Right? So, um, and uh, I will pick up a few cases and just talk about in various domains. For example, in healthcare. Okay. Uh, more recently, a whole bunch of data in this uh, in this domain, the healthcare domain, is getting digital in nature. Okay, uh, and um, uh, more or less, uh, you see uh, uh, ML deployments or you know AI deployments in healthcare across various across these three fields mainly: medical devices, digital health, and biotechnology. Okay, so in terms of medical devices, there's a whole bunch of work in bioprint, bio bioprinting. So early stage startups building uh, you know organ printing machines. So uh, so that if you've lost an organ, you can well uh, have a customized organ uh, replacement in that census. Okay, neurotechnology uh, or uh, customized organ augmentation, so to say. Right? Neurotechnology, so enhancing human capabilities by integrating with the nervous system. There is a whole bunch of work on fMRIs and trying to encode, decode fMRI data and understand. So, for example, you know, if a, if a person was shown this image, can from your from the brain signals uh, after looking at that image, can you sort of guess what image was shown to the person, right? And so on. Uh, so similarly, in the in the speech side, you know, if a person heard something and uh, based on the uh, brain signals, can you sort of figure out what did this person hear? Okay. So, uh, handheld diagnostics. So, conden uh, condensing lab-grade diagnostics into handheld ones, right? So, basically, trying to bring in more and more sensors on these handheld devices just to measure various kinds of your uh, bioparameters very quickly, okay? And in a very convenient way. So, there's a lot of work which is going on on all of that medical devices, the hardware part, so to say. Okay. There's a whole, whole lot of work on digital health also, like uh, uh, intelligent drug design, so automating, dr uh, automating uh, the drug design and compound selection. So how can you figure out nice drugs that can, um, uh, drugs or medicines that can sort of uh, uh, deal with certain kinds of diseases. Right? Skin as a platform, so dermal, transdermal uh, drug delivery and monitoring devices. So various bio devices that can be worn by users to track uh, their bioparameters. Right? Uh, blockchain enabled hospitals, so distributed networks advancing uh, security and data sharing, right? So medical data contains a lot of privacy. How can you sort of uh, share data across hospitals while respecting privacy, right? So and then there is a whole bunch of work in biotechnology on anti-aging therapies, RNA-based therapies, uh, CAR T cell therapies, and whatnot. So various kinds of such therapies, right? So uh, besides this, of course, in healthcare, there's a whole bunch of predictive things that are coming up. Uh, for example, you know, predicting uh, cardiac uh, risk score for a patient, uh, or or sort of uh, uh, predicting the outcomes of various surgeries before the surgery is actually done, and so on. Okay. Now, in the financial sector, again, AI has been seeing a whole bunch of use cases. Uh, you know, these are various companies which are sort of invested in various sub-use cases in the financial sector. Okay? So, in the fintech space, in fact, credit scoring or direct lending is, has been one of the most important use cases for AI. So, use AI for robust credit scoring and lending applications. Should I give a loan to this guy or not? If I want to sort of, uh, um, uh, you know, have a credit limit on this guy's credit card, what should be that credit limit and so on. Regulatory compliance and fraud detection. So use AI to detect fraudulent and abnormal financial behavior. Okay, uh, and or use AI to improve general regulatory compliance matters and workflows. So use of AI for finding out if somebody is misusing your, uh, somebody has stolen your credit card, misusing it, or any other kind of uh, uh, frauds in general, like insider trading and whatnot. Right. General purpose predictive analytics, use AI for general purpose semantic and natural understanding applications, in fact, for building chatbots on your, on your financial websites and so on. So assistance, personal finance, so chatbot or a mobile app assistant to monitor personal finances or also to give you public information about various FAQs that are also answered on these websites. Okay. 
Uh, business finance and expense reporting. So use AI to improve basic business accounting. Um, including expense reporting so um, you know can can uh, um, can an ai tool look at your uh, uh, look at your various transactions that are going on on your bank account and then categorize the expenses nicely into say five or ten categories and tell you hey this is the amount you spent on groceries this is the amount you spent on uh, xyz and so on on travel and so on okay Insurance, uh, uh, so use AI to quote and insure. So essentially, um, uh, uh, if you have to underwrite something, you know what is the, uh, or other, if you have to basically come up with a premium for a for a for a person who is who has come for insurance, what sh how should you define the premium, right? How should you sort of predict the right premium that you should sell uh, this particular insurance policy to this guy? Okay. Um, so, so quote and then insure as well. Right? So, market research, sentiment analysis, use AI to efficient uh, uh, to efficiently research and measure the sentiment. So, very useful for stock trading, for various kinds of, uh, uh, or even even deciding, uh, uh, you know, uh, whether to invest in what kind of stocks or mutual funds and so on. Okay. Quantitative and asset management. So, again, uh, investment strategy planning, uh, debt collection. So, use AI to improve creditor collection of outstanding debt through personalized and automated communication. Right. So understand the user much better so as to communicate nicely so that you can recover as much as possible nicely, okay, efficiently. Okay, so, so that said, you know, um, uh, another yet important use case for AI that is uh, uh, more important in today's world is these personalized assistants. And these assistants have been sort of increasing in time, uh, you know, across domains, okay. So real time, and they, they have been useful for a variety of use cases like real time product targeting or visual search. So uh, image recognition platforms to help e-commerce website let visitors search by image instead of text and so on. Conversational commerce, sizing and styling. So AI power software to help retailers uh, integrate improved product sizing and outfit building tools into their websites. Right. So um, real-time pricing and incentives, uh, uh, location-based marketing, all of those, uh, in fact, pr predictive merchandising, all of those are sort of awesome use cases uh, where uh, AI is sort of helping personal assistants. Now, you know, uh, personal assistants are increasing day by day. Uh, a lot of search now no longer is on Google or no longer is on, you know, of course it was, uh, it had stopped being desktop search for a long time and switched to mobile search. People would search on their mobiles and on, on various search engines, but now a lot of search is app-based search, okay? So you know various apps not just personal assistant but building various apps which can actually do a whole bunch of predictive analysis right uh, do personalized uh, uh, understanding of the user and so on uh, that's what is catching up okay so five use cases of AI and robotics in agriculture now, you know you, agriculture is of course very important and uh, uh, it turns out, uh, uh, especially for, for, for a country like India, right, where a lot of uh, uh, population uh, uh, is involved in agriculture, right? So, and in terms of agriculture, AI is sort of helping in a variety of ways, like analyzing satellite image data. Now, you can analyze satellite image data and then come up with uh, uh, things like, uh, uh, you know, uh, what is the land use currently? So, um, um, basically figuring out what are the different types of farms, what is being grown in a particular area, and so on. So, um, um, and in fact, you can do a whole bunch of uh, merging this data with other kinds of data sets like weather data and so on, and therefore uh, predict uh, things like what is the right time to sow seeds and so on, right? So, so which is also about predictive analytics, uh, uh, in-field monitoring. So essentially you could use robotics to design drones which can actually do nice monitoring. Uh, of, of what's up in your field, assessing crop soil health. So um, essentially uh, there are sensors now uh, which can actually assess the chemical composition of soil and continuously send this data to the cloud where some AI or ML can actually sort of uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, do further analysis on that and come up with insights as to what is this uh, you know what is the health of the soil you know in fact uh, there are some uh, um, uh, new um, techniques being built so as to suggest what kind of crops can better be grown in this particular field okay, based on the chemical composition okay. Uh, agriculture robots, so uh, various kinds of robots which can uh, help uh, with various kinds, uh, with getting various kinds of parameters and making different kinds of decisions for for better, uh, uh, for efficient agriculture. Okay, there's this term called precision agriculture, where uh, you know, uh, uh, where based on various sensor data that is being collected from the farm, you want to deal with every patch of the farm in a different personalized way, so to say. So, for example, uh, you know, uh, usually farmers would just sprinkle water in the entire farm or sprinkle pesticides in the entire 
entire farm without worrying much about the moisture content in the soil in a particular patch of the farm or the soil con the, the chemical composition of the soil in that particular patch of the of the land right but now with precision agriculture where you have sensors spread across different patches of the land you can actually do much better okay so that's where uh, you know uh, the hope is that ai will continue uh, will continue to sort of uh, contribute uh, in agriculture okay so those are uh, the basic um, various use cases uh, where you know ai and ml uh, can potentially contribute um, to uh, uh, can potentially contribute um, uh, to make them effective and efficient right? if you come if you can think of more use cases where ai can potentially contribute in the coming year if you are working on a startup on a new idea where you are using ai uh, to to deliver a use case do write them down in the comments okay